Mmm. -hmm. St. Louis ribs. Now, don't you wish you could cook these in a small space where you don't have access to a grill, you don't have access to even a smoker, for God's sakes? I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you why it's so easy to take a recipe for some lovely goodness, this 8.86 pounds of love, and turn it into some wonderful food. Now, how do you do it? How do you go about it? Well, stick around and I'll show you right now. Well, hi everybody. Now today we're going to do a good recipe that I am calling indoor spare ribs. Now, why do we even say indoor spare ribs? Well, indoor spare ribs is simply because we in San Francisco do not have the facilities that I would have back home in Colorado to make proper spare ribs. And proper spare ribs require time, lots of time, and smoke. But these little lovelies right here will be turned into something good. Now let's get started. This is a cryo bag. You can buy these at Costco. You usually buy these, these things come and it's about mm, eight, nine pounds worth of them. So this is, like, I think, three racks in this bad boy. Usually they're longer, but these are actually pretty short cut uh, St. Louis ribs. Now St. Louis rib, if you don't know, is actually the front part. So if, you, if, you, if I'm a pig, right? Uh, the back part of me right here is my spine to right here. From the spine to here is the baby backs. The front part up to the rib cage is the St. Louis. Usually there's a little bit more meat, a little bit more connective tissue as well as fat, but it's all good stuff. Now let's go ahead and don our safety equipment because you do not want to, ah, oh, balls. <laughs> you don't want to have that happen. Let's try again. There's plenty and plenty and plenty of safety gloves. Now I always handle, whenever I'm handling meat, I always handle it with uh, gloves on because I do not want to get funk all over my hands as well as all inside. That would be just disgusting. Now, here we go. Come on now, simmer down. Okay, let's give them just a quick runs to get all that crap off of them. And now we will don our cute little paring knife so that way we can actually get to action now. When we cut this thing open, we want to be focusing on just getting the juice out because the juice is going to fall out. That's why we have it right next to the sink, which is actually pretty good. So if you cut that guy right here, see, if you cut this bag, meh, yeah, just give it a nice slice right around the edge, you can actually let all that juice and crap fall out into the sink as we do not like the juice and crap. So let's get all that out and give it a slice. There we go. Now it's opening up. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Got a little face. That's fine. Oh, yeah. These beauties are nice. Look at that. Look at those pretties. Isn't that nice? Isn't that something you just want to put in your belly? Oh, yeah. It's so hot and sexy. All right. Put it right there. And another one. Wow. This is a triple. Wow. Usually, I only. Usually, when you buy these things, they're kind of big. So you get like these huge slabs, but in this case, we have a lot of ribs to deal with. Okay, let's just maybe use the sink for a little while. Shit, I don't know how to deal with all that. All right, so I got a really big cutting board, and what we gotta do is first is prep these ribs. So the prep starts right here. See all these big, huge chunks of fat and all these other kind of stuff? Now the fat's fine, that's all gonna render off. I'm just trying to get rid of kind of huge, gnarly pieces, because I don't want, uh, the entire thing to be gooey fatness, which is all right, you know, it's good stuff. You're going to keep all that for uh, stews or stocks or whatever, because there's going to be a lot of bones left. If you want to have a good stock, the uh, pork rib stock is actually pretty good. So we're going to trim all this guy up. All right. Great. And while I'm doing that, and now that we've, we're going to trim this up and be right back. Okay, so we trimmed up our boy, took off a pretty good amount of the fat that was on there. There's going to be a lot that's kind of left in, but that, trust me, that will all boil out. Now there is one little piece that most people do not touch. It's called the fell, which is actually this silvery kind of rubber looking. You can see it, it's like a shine. There's actually a little membrane that is on the, the rib that will make it really difficult for our rub to stick. So what we want to do is take that off. So if you can find yourself a little corner, there should be a little place. Huh, a little, <laughs> little blood spot. There's gonna, we need to find a little area to get in. So usually one of these bones will be a good opportunity. So the bone right here you will come off. You'll get a kind of little port in there, see? 
Now we'll go in there with a paper towel. Paper towel, John. Okay. And we want to grab off that fell. Okay, there's a little bit of bone that I gotta make sure no one grabs. Okay, and there we go. You can see it kind of peel. See this right here? See? Right here, there's this little kind of peely thing. I'm gonna peel all that off. Most folks do not do this step, but it's to their detriment because the fell doesn't allow the flavors to pierce into the meat. No flavor in the meat. No, um, what's the word? Yeah, if you don't get the dry rub in the meat, then you're kind of screwed. And speaking of dry rub, maybe I should show you my dry rub because that would probably be the part that you guys are gonna need help on. So let's do that. All right, guys, now the other thing you need to know about a dry rub is it's pretty simple. It requires three main ingredients. Well, three very, very basic ones. You want to have a mix of about five parts salt, three parts sugar, and then one part whatever else, whatever you feel like putting in there, honestly. Well, what do I mean by part? Well, because barbecue is really not a thing that requires a lot of really big measurements. If you wanted to, you could take the tablespoon and just have five tablespoons of salt, five tablespoons of brown sugar, and then one tablespoon of other stuff. Paprika, uh, like chili powder, onion salt, any of those things. Garlic powder, whatever you feel like putting in your rub, that's what's gonna kinda do it. So there's usually a base. Five parts of salt, three parts sugar, and then one part whatever else you feel like it. Now, as you can imagine, in a regular kinda cooking show, I already made my own. There it is. It's the same rub I just told you about. It's five parts uh, brown sugar and three, no, five parts, five parts salt, three parts brown sugar, and then other stuff. So I got chili flake, paprika, cayenne pepper, uh, garlic salt, celery salt, and a couple other things. I can't remember. And this is what we're gonna use for actually putting it on the ribs. Now, a rib without any kind of dry rub is disgusting. We don't want that. So before we get started, we need one thing. We need a base. We need a aluminum foil base, honestly. Now, the ribs were about yay big, so we need to make our rib sack, because we need a sack to hold our ribs. Because what we're actually doing is we are not going to be grilling these things, right? We are going to be braising. Now, what's the difference between a grill and a braise? Well, a braise is where we use liquid in which to cook the meat. Now, what we want to do here is, as you can see, there's two pieces. We want to make a little crease like this on one side, okay? Make sure it's as even as you can get it, okay? Fold it again to make a second crease, and then we're going to fold it on itself. So the purpose of this is we want it to be liquid tight because we do not want any of the juice that we will be cooking inside of the sack to come out. As you see, it's two pieces, two parts, bam, opens up into a nice big area. Now we're gonna put our ribs on this. Now I've already prepared two others, so if we have three sets of ribs. This is super shiny, so get over it. It'll be super shiny. Now we need some new gloves because, hey, I thought it'd be a great idea to rummage around without the gloves on. Now I gotta get the damn gloves back on, but that's why they're cheap get some cooking gloves. Make your life easy, keep everything nice and clean and sanitary. Nothing more you want to do when it comes to meat than keep shit clean, otherwise you will have some fun times in the bathroom for a while. It's called cross-contamination, don't do that. Okay, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Dry these puppies off, all right, good to go. All right, now take one of your rib. Now, I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use all this rub, but because I mean, this is a pretty good chunk of rub. If I use not, you're gonna use all this rub and put it in another container, so that way I didn't get it all greasy and disgusting. But I'm pretty damn sure, ooh, <laughs> pretty damn sure I'm gonna use it all, but let's just put a little base layer. Not entirely necessary, but might as well. Now we take one of our ribs. Now this is the cool part. This is the part I like. We're gonna put it right there. We'll do the, uh, the back side first. Just take your rub and just shaker on there. Now why do you call this a rub everybody at home? Well, it's pretty easy actually. You rub the spices into the meat. Pretty easy. Now you don't have to go nuts because we're gonna let this marinate for overnight. Okay, that's that's just how it goes. You have to give this stuff time to work. 
So you let this marinate enough. We did not pull the fell off. We would not be able to get all that stuff inside of the back of these ribs. Now the back of the ribs hold a lot of flavor because all these bones will get all their all their flavor will release as it cooks. Now be careful because I don't want to split or damage the aluminum foil. So be gentle when you flip. Okay, might be a little bit conservative with that since I have two other racks to go. But you get the point, you rub that action in and it is juicy and lovely. See the color changing because of the paprika. Now, depending on what you like or what, what you kind of feel is your signature flavor, you will change your rub depending on that. Now your rub can be, uh, again, an assortment of many things, but if your particular flavor is you like a lot of paprika, a lot of spice, a lot of something, then go for it, do some spicy. Want to have a little bit more sweet and savory, you know, add a little bit more sugar to that extra part. So remember, you still had five parts sugar, three parts, five parts salt, three parts sugar, and then one part of everything else. So if you want it a little bit sweeter, add a little something else. Now, what we're going to do is take one edge of this, hold it over the other, and let's hold that action over like this, okay? Now, same thing we're going to do before, just going to do a real easy curve, curve, and then roll it in on itself. So you get a little package. Now, one side you can roll and we can kind of just make sure it's totally tight. Do not want this moving, but you want to have a little bit of air on top of the rib. You don't want to... This other one, leave it open like this because we're going to do something with that. This will be our little spout to put the liquid in when we get to that point. Now let's do this for the other three and I'll be right back. All right guys, now the next step we're gonna make is the actual braising sauce. Now you need a, bra a braising sauce in order for this to work uh, because the steam and the goodness from all that water is actually gonna help to cook these uh, ribs a lot faster and easier, especially considering the fact we don't have a wet smoker or anything good like that. This is gonna do the trick. Now for every rack of ribs, you figure about half a cup of, I'll, I'll do the, the basic recipe, it calls for white wine, Worcestershire sauce, a little bit of honey, and then a little bit of garlic, which will be over here. Here we go. And get these. If you get these from Trader Joe's, these are awesome. They're little tablespoons of garlic already punched out, so you don't have to do anything. They are spectacular. Now, the basic recipe is this crappy $2 uh, wine from Trader's or anywhere you want. I mean, it doesn't have to be the best wine in the whole world. And trust me, this stuff is certainly not the greatest in the entire planet, but you know what it is? It is great for what we need. And you do need a drinking wine. You, you need a, we put a wine in there you actually would drink. And I would only drink this if I basically ran out of everything else in the kitchen, which would take a while. There it goes, horrible wine. Let's take a little. Oh yeah, that's great. So since I have three racks of ribs, I'm going to do this re this recipe in in uh, like three times what I'd do it. So in this case, I need one and a half cups of this white wine because I'm going to split this liquid into thirds. Okay, now to get the easier stuff like the uh, Worcestershire sauce, the Worcestershire sauce, I need uh, about a tablespoon per rack of rib and the tablespoon per rack. Yeah. All right, good enough. That's that's good enough for shit wine. This thing is awesome. This is a measuring thing. So basically, you just set it to here. So you see, tablespoons is right here, and this is awesome. You just crick it up to here, and I need three, so I put it right in the middle, and then take your Worcestershire sauce, and here you go. You just let her let her do her thing. Ah, yeah, hot. Bring it all the way up to the rim, and there. Okay, now what I also need, let's be very gentle, shit, don't, okay, don't be bitch, it's trying to be bitch, there you go, the old twist, whew, okay, so then you use the top of the liquid for the next measurement, in this case it's about half a tablespoon of honey that I'll need, so we're just gonna go ahead and do that much. I think. White wine, uh, vinegar, right. That would be the trick. 
Uh, you can use apple cider, white wine, whatever, but I only have rice vinegar laying around, so it'll work. So in this case, we need another three tablespoons of that. Uh, looks like about three tablespoons-ish. I'm going to add one, because I don't want to have to dick around with it. Almost ready to spill every time I'm trying to get a new freaking measurement here. There we go. Okay, down to nine and a half. Okay, great. So if I put this guy up to four, we are set. Do a little math, and you don't have to dick around. Okay, up to four. Great, great. This is rice wine winter vinegar, so it's not going to be so strong. It's ridiculous. Take your honey. So in this case, this honey seized a bit, but you can always put it in the microwave, and it will come right back. And then we want to come in there. Don't be bitch. And it's pouring out from every orifice in this thing, except for the top. Whoa! 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 Come on, now! Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Happy honey, baby. Come on, now. Oh, God, it's everywhere. Okay, this would be probably just easier to take the damn top off and just... Oh, no, oh, it's a little chunky. Ah, oh, it's okay. It'll, it'll come about in the. Oh no, that's a little too much. Well, fuck it. It's okay. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Now we're getting crazy. Now we're getting crazy with the honey. Now what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna take this mix. This is all I need to measure. Dump it into here. And yeah, isn't that awesome? Isn't that spectacular? Now if I just had something. Yep. Yep. There we go. Oh yeah, happy gay, happy days. All right, I'm a happy guy. Woo, that tastes great. That tastes great already. I'll take our little mix. We need three of these garlics. One, two, three. Ah, oh. mm. I can already smell the love. Now toss this in the microwave for one minute to get it all heated, and then let's put it in the in there. All right, now we took our mix out of the mic. Here he is, nice and happy. Let's make sure to give her a little stir so that way everything is mixed together. Ah, God damn it, I hate when my wife puts water on the fucking floor. Okay. All right, here we go. Everything seems to be mixed together and nice and happy. You see that emulsion of love and happiness. What we did is we took our ribs out of the out of the out of the fridge. And we're now going to fill it. Now, if you look here, we got somewhere in the range of about two cups of fluid. So, a little bit more than one and a third. So, if I was to take two thirds, four, six, six, nine, two cups. That was stupid. Basically, take about a third of each and dump it into here. And each, so each of these have a little hole. Remember, this is the one part we crimped. This is the one part that's open to receive the brazing liquid. Now let's go ahead and make sure we only put about about to the quarter mark, and that should be okay. A little bit more. Cool. Let's put a little bit in here. Oh, my wife's gonna kill me. I'm getting shit all over the stove. No, oh, well, she'll she'll live. Okay. There we go. Okay, a little bit more here, a little bit more here, a little bit more here. Pretty good. I'll buy it. Okay, so what we're going to do is just tilt them up and you'll hear little gurgles as the fluid then distributes a little bit more evenly. There it goes. And now crimp the top so that we keep all that lovely juice and moisture in there. Same with this guy. Oh, you hear it? Yeah. Well, maybe you can't hear it, but trust me, it's gurgling. Let's get this shit crimped. Now we preheated our oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit for all you guys that are in other countries than America who actually have a decent temperature system, because golly, Celsius is a lot easier. 250 in our oven, and then we're going to put that in, and we're going to let it go for two and a half hours. Yeah, two and a half hours at 250 degrees, low and slow, baby. So let's get her in the oven. Now when you put these things in the oven, make sure that you... We're going to have to put them in it too, because I have so many ribs here. It's unfortunate for me, but fortunate for my guests. You want to put those in just right in the middle racks-ish. 
let her go and come back in a long time. And we'll check these in probably two, two and a half hours, and we'll do the, the, the test to see if these things are good to go, the bone test. All right, guys, and at this point, what we want to do is we took one of these things out of the oven. It's been now two and a half ish hours, almost three. I'm going to open her up just slightly and watch out because obviously water, when it expands, creates steam, which hurts a lot on naked hands. So, or dickheads like me that are doing this. Okay, so what we're looking for in here is oh, yeah. Looking to see if it pulls apart. Mmm, 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 mmm. Okay. So we'll take a fork and see if it is fork. Oh yeah, it's getting there. It might be a little toothsome. It's okay, but if it pulls apart like that, we're certainly getting closer. So let me test it. Ah. Mm. Nom, 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 nom. Very tasty, but I'm gonna leave it in there for just a little bit more. It should pull out, you should start seeing the bones. See right there? The bones pulling away or in the edge. That's what you're looking for. So let's let these cook for just a little bit until people start showing up. Because mm, the nice part about this recipe is you can just let it go and go and go and then just get more and more tender. And ooh, that's good stuff. So we got all of our meat out of the oven right now. It's still kind of set up, on, but uh, if you're looking on here, come on in. Come on in. If you're looking on here, I did the old fork test. The fork test is you take the fork kind of rummage around in there, and if it pulls apart like that, look at that action. Isn't that sexy? Doesn't that make you just want to have a little... <gasps> it does. Okay, hold on. <laughs> mm, very good. Now we got to get the juice out of these and into that pan. Because we want to then take this juice, it's going to turn into our braising liquid. And a braising liquid is good stuff. And if we did this right... <laughs> Woo! Get the other one too. That's that's freaking hot. Okay. Other one should be dandy as well. Oh, woo, woo! That whole water converting into steam thing is pretty goddamn hot. Okay. Here we go. All right. Now this will be an interesting one since I got two of them. Behind your mittens there, or welding gloves, whatever you decide you want. And now we want to turn this guy. Kind of keep your thumbs on the meat. Look at all that goodness, all the fat dripping out of that. Don't have to eat it all. Just get most of it. There we go. Pull it back in. And then we make mess so that way my wife gets angry. Right? Wait, she's manning the camera. Okay, get our second spout together. Oh yeah. Both sort of. Okay. Whoa, that is hot. Okay, see that steamins? Yeah, boy, that is uh, definitely steaming it. Okay, let's get this guy over. It looks like kind of like a fish, except for a very tasty porky fish. Okay. A lot easier to manage just one compared to the two, but... That's what he calls. Now we're going to take this liquid here and we're going to put it on the boil for until this turns into a glaze. The glaze will then go on top of our ribs. So we'll get right back to you as we're doing this glaze. What we did is we took the ribs, put them back in the oven, because now they don't have the braising liquid on them. It'll kind of dry them out and get a little bit more of a, you know, kind of a crunch on the outside. And while we're doing that, we're going to put this guy on high. This is all of our braising juices. And as you see, there's a little film of fat on the top of that. But guess who cares? Nope, not me, because this is all good. We're going to let this boil off, get all the water out of it, until you can pull a spoon across. When you can pull a spoon across, then we'll be good. And we'll get back to you when I get to that point. Okay, so now we have our sauce, and it's Nat Bay, which means that to the, so you can pull the spoon across and leave the trail. Nat Bay, so you learn a little bit of French cooking. Okay, we're going to take this off the heat now, and we're going to pull out our ribs. We're going to segment the ribs, mix this together, we're going to have some sexy times. Okay, so now that our sauce is good, take your brush. Get a nice sauce on that action. And we opened up our ribs on the top and just put a little action on the top there. So we're gonna put them back under the broiler for just a moment to caramelize. Get a little wet and nice. That's good stuff. Okay, so you're gonna do this with the other set of ribs and then we'll be good to go. So until then, we'll show you the finished product. 
And now here it is, just the final product. Your pork ribs are now tender, lovely. Cut them on the nub every one or two, and then just put them right in that action. And we'll drizzle a little just sauce right on top, and you too can do these pretty easily. So try this recipe at home, and you will sure enjoy. Hey, bye. Okay.